suspicion. It starts with over 26,000 square kilometers of land, set in an ideal location where three continents meet, right at the heart of the world's transport, trade, and telecoms routes. A place rich in natural resources with a generous climate. Here we see the birth of NEOM, the world's most ambitious project, a destination of the future, a vision that is becoming reality. We see a chance to design a better way of life, with a blueprint for sustainable living. We see a place that will inspire new learning, create new industries and encourage enterprise, invention and ingenuity. A hive of creativity and a new home of culture. A roadmap for the future of civilization. We see a new way, a new era. We see Neom. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome to the stage the anchor and global markets editor at Fox Business Network, Maria Bartiromo. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to be with you this afternoon as we kick off a very special part of the program right now. As we watch something of a revolution happening here in Saudi Arabia, as the kingdom looks to growth. Let me introduce the vision behind that growth story. Please welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, His Royal Highness, Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Hello, Your Highness. Thank you. And now, our other panelists. Please welcome to the stage Stephen A. Schwarzman, Chairman and CEO and co-founder of the Blackstone Group. Masayoshi San, Chairman and CEO of the SoftBank Group of Japan. Mark Raybert, CEO, Boston Dynamics of the USA. And Klaus Kleinfeld, the former chairman and CEO, Arconic and Alcoa, former president and CEO, Siemens of the USA. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. And to you, Your Royal Highness, thank you so much for hosting us. We just watched a video of NEOM. This is the first time we are actually hearing what NEOM is. You are breaking this news right now. Please tell us your vision for this new city. If you allow, if you allow me, I will speak in Arabic. Please. Arabic because a lot of Saudi audience here, and I really respect them. Uh, <laughs> لدينا في نيوم فرص تكاد أن تكون خيالية طلب ضخم سعودي طلب سعودي وديماند متسرب خارج السعودية بحجم يصل إلى 100 مليار دولار قدرة استثمارية ضخمة جدا مستهدفة بحجم 500 مليار دولار موقع مميز بين ثلاث قارات بين أهم معابر للنقل الجوي والنقل البحري مثال على ذلك 10% من التجارة العالمية تمر بجوار موقع من خلال البحر الأحمر طبيعة خلابة جبال وديان سهول شواطئ شعب جزر في الشتاء الجبال تكسوها الثلوج في الصيف جو معتدل أقل بعشر درجات من بقية العواصم والمدن الخليجية الإرادة السياسية القوية والرغبة والإرادة الشعبية القوية كل عناصر نجاح موجودة لخلق شيء عظيم كبير داخل المملكة العربية السعودية فبعد وجود كل هذه الفرص والمقومات وأرض شبه خالية 
بدأنا نفكر لماذا نبني مدينة وزون بشكل تقليدي لدينا فرصة ننتقل إلى جيل جديد من طريقة الحياة من المدن من التقنيات من الصحة الخدمات إلى آخره فبدأنا نعمل مع العديد من الشركات والمستثمرين ورواد الأعمال لبلورت كل هذه الأفكار واستغلال هذا الطلب والقدرة الهائلة لخلق شيء جديد في العالم ونقل العالم إلى موقع جديد لدينا اليوم مجموعة من الأصدقاء الذي عملنا معهم فترة الماضية على هذا المشروع ما لديه حلم بأن يبني أكبر شرائح طاقة شمسية في العالم في مشروع اليوم يريد أن يبني شيء أعظم وصور الصين عظيم لكن على شكل ألواح شمسية ستيف أهم الصناديق من أهم الصناديق في العالم ولا يريد أن يفوت فرصة بأن يكون موجود في مشروع ينقل طريقة الحياة البشرية بشكل مختلف مارك يريد أن يدخل معنا في تصميم هذا المشروع وتخطيطه لكي يخلق لنفسه ديماند أو لكي يخلق لروبوتاته ديماند كبير جدا في هذا المشروع يريد أن يكون عدد الروبوتات في هذا المشروع أكثر من عدد البشر وكلاوس لديه كرير ضخم جدا ترك كل الفرص الكبرى اللي عنده وآمن بهذه القضية لكي ينشأها ويضع بصمته في مشروع سوف يغير الكثير من المعالم والأساليب في الأرض ولدينا أيضا كثير من الشركاء موجودين في هذه القاعة وخارج هذه القاعة يعملون معنا بشكل قوي لبلورة هذه الفكرة فكل عناصر نجاح موجودة لخلق شيء عظيم وشيء جديد وأهم عنصر لدينا هو الشعب السعودي ورغبة إرادة الشعب السعودي الشعب الذي يعيش في هذه الصحراء لديه الكثير من القيم والمبادئ والركائز لكن لأنه عاش في هذه الصحراء لمدة طويلة لديه خصلتين مهمة الأولى دهاء هذا اللي جعله يعيش في صحراء صعبة والثانية عزيمة جبارة تجعله يقاوم أي شيء ويصل لأي شيء متى مقتنع فيه واليوم لدينا شعب مقتنع نعمل معه بشكل قوي للوصول المملكة العربية السعودية ومشاريعها وبرامجها إلى أفاق جديدة في العالم ف لكي يختم ما هو نيوم بشكل مختصر الفرق الذي سوف يكون في نيوم كزون وكالمدينة التي سوف تكون في داخل نيوم مثل الفرق بين هذا الهاتف وبين هذا الهاتف هذا ما سوف نعمله في داخل نيوم Your Highness, you have the demand. We know that the people want entertainment. They want to go and see different places on the ocean. We know you have the money to do this and you have the resources. What kind of a reception have you received by this tremendous vision? resources, uh, بلا شك فيه شمس كافيه جدا لخلق اي طاقه نريدها من الشمس، فيه رياح تعتبر من افضل المواقع او افضل موقع في الشرق الاوسط توجد فيه الرياح، ايضا ممكن استخراج 200 الف برميل من النفط في الموقع نفسه غير الموارد العاليه من الغاز في داخل الموقع. فاعتقد انه الاغلبيه طلعوا على خبر اعلان نيوم وقرأوا ما هي تسع قطاعات التي نركز عليها لإنشاء هذه هذا الزون وهذه المدينة في قلب هذا الزون فهناك فرص كثيرة جدا نعمل عليها ونحاول أن لا نعمل فقط إلا مع الحالمين لأن هذا المشروع ليس مكان لأي مستثمر أو أي شركة تقليدية هذا المشروع فقط موقع ومكان للحالمين الذين يريدون خلق شيء جديد في هذا العالم Klaus Kleinfeld, you will be the CEO of NEOM. Give us your vision. What are you expecting this to look like within the next five years? Actually, we don't know he's a CEO or a governor of, the, of, the, of NEOM. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
first of all, I mean, I wouldn't be sitting here if it weren't for the vision of the kingdom and if it weren't for the leadership that you just heard the vision. And it's not only the vision, the vision that is big, it's also the capabilities to put it in action, right? And, and those things are a, a critical essence. I tell you, my first, uh, when I received the, uh, the question, Klaus, would you be interested in it? I said, let me come over and let me take a look at the land. And, and I went there, and this is 26,500 square kilometers. It has 500 kilometers of beachfront. Two thirds of this is sandy beaches, islands, coral reefs. One third of it is mountainous terrain, drop, very steep drops and all of it is untouched, beautiful. You have mountains that go up to 2,500 meters. You have a climate that's really nice, really nice, the wind blows all the time, you know? So I saw it and I thought, where on earth, you know, can this, can this happen? And then you look at the geography and you say, I mean, 70% of all people all around the world can be here in this place in no more than eight hours flight time, you know? So the, if you look at the transit routes, 10 plus percent of all transit go through the Suez Canal. You know, you have the telecom routes going through there. You put all these things together and you say, wow. And then you start and saying, well, what have we got here? I mean, the kingdom has been blessed with oil and gas. We know this. The kingdom has been blessed with the new oil and gas, which is sun, right? And Neom has been blessed on top of it with wind. You know, so we can create something that is fully regenerative powered zero carbon, carbon, net zero carbon, you know. We actually think that we can export from there, and I'm sure Masa-san is going to talk more about it because he's going to help put this vision into reality now, you know. So this is, this is very exciting. And then when you pair it with the idea of, I mean, if you think about, there's a shift. I mean, I, as you know, Maria, I mean, I've got uh, two daughters, you know, uh, 23 and 28, you know, and when I listen to them and their friends, you know, there's a different generation. There's a different, there's a different view of how the future should look like. Sustainability plays a big role. Quality of life plays a big role. And they all want to be part of the technological revolution that's going on. So our great vision here is to bring these things together, to create a place where you can live very well, very, very well. Well in a way that's more back to where humanity came from. But you pair it with using technology to help do this and accelerating it into a future that makes the human more, uh, makes economic benefits, has economic benefits, but puts the human in front, you know? So that's, I mean, that's inspiring to me, and um, as His Royal Highness said, I'm very much <laughs> inclined to put my fingerprints on it, and he's helping every day on it, and every night. <laughs> Your Highness, you. you have an incredibly beautiful country. You have the resources, but you are, having radical ideas, some might say. Recently, you've announced that you will soon allow women to drive. You are allowing foreign investment in your beautiful country. Why now? What triggered this change in thinking? Uh, والمنطقة كلها انتشر فيها مشروع الصحوة بعد عام 79 لأسباب كثيرة ليس مجال اليوم ذكرها فنحن لم نكون بالشكل هذا في السابق نحن فقط نعود إلى ما كنا عليه الإسلام الوسطي المعتدل المنفتح على العالم وعلى جميع الأديان وعلى جميع التقاليد والشعوب سبعين في المئة من الشعب السعودي أقل من ثلاثين سنة وبكل صراحة لن نضيع ثلاثين سنة من حياتنا في التعامل مع أي أفكار متطرفة سوف ندمرهم اليوم وفورا نريد أن نعيش حياة طبيعية حياة تترجم ديننا السمح وعاداتنا وتقاليدنا الطيبة ونتعايش مع العالم ونساهم في تنمية وطننا ووطن العالم فهذا أمر أعتقد أنه اتخذت خطوات في الفترة الماضية واضحة وأعتقد أنه سوف نقضي على بقايا التطرف في القريب العاجل فلا أعتقد أن هذا تحدي لأننا نمثل القيم السمحة والمعتدلة والصحيحة والقضية معانا 
والحق معانا احنا في كل ما نواجهه لذلك لا اعتقد ان هذا قلق Thank you, Your Highness. Thank you for those important words, Your Highness. Masayoshi san, you are investing in the Saudi Electric Company. You see opportunity here in Neom. Tell us about it. Well, I think uh, Neom is a fantastic uh, opportunity. Uh, Crown Prince uh, convinced me to get involved in this project. Uh, in the beginning, I did not understand but when I visited the location, I said, wow. Uh, and I, also talking about the future, we cannot create just a, one more new city. We have to create dramatically different next century city so that we can, we can expand, extend the wealth and happiness of the kingdom. And I said, we can make it happen uh, with the high-tech technology and high-touch, more human-like living in, uh, uh, with a great technology, but with a great nature, beautiful ocean, uh, beach, and uh, 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 clean and great job. So we discussed and said, uh, then Crown Prince said, well, Masa, if you have the vision and the wish, make it happen. Make it happen. Let's make it happen together. So I said, okay, I will make a commitment. <coughs> so this afternoon, uh, we made a commitment and uh, announced a signed MOU that we, SoftBank, SoftBank Vision Fund, would invest a significant uh, a stake investment into Saudi Electric uh, Corporation company, and uh, we will make uh, through investment into Saudi Electric uh, company, we make it into the next generation with a uh, new energy of the solar uh, using the sunshine. I don't know why, but God keep on giving the gift to this kingdom. Oil and sunshine and the sun. <laughs> so not only we import technology or product, but actually in Neon, we are going to create from the sand into polysilicon, from polysilicon to ingot from ingot to wafer, from wafer to the solar panel, and solar panel generate electricity. So from the sun and the sunshine, we, get, we make all of it 100% using the nature of the kingdom. And Saudi has the uh, great Mecca. We will create two more Mecca. I will explain myself. Mecca is a Mecca a <laughs> yes. yes, no, no, no. What, what I mean is, what I mean is, new technology. No, that, that's what I really mean. We will create the largest solar power generation in the world, in Neon. <laughs> One more thing, is the largest and most advanced robot generation in the world. So all the engineers, all the engineers 
developing technology about the solar power generation, though all those engineers will come and show their technology, develop the technology together in this NEO. All the robot engineers from all over the world, they will all come and bring the new technology and create a, a fantastic next generation robots. So as the Crown Prince said, this will be the first city on the earth, more robot than human population in the city. So therefore, I would say the new, new uh, the passion, the new uh, excitement will happen from this new city, Neon. This is a very important point that you make, Masa, and we want to talk about that in terms of robotics. But Steve Schwarzman, let me go to you, because the Blackstone Group owns and, and has invested in, in so many companies. Do you see an opportunity to bring companies to NEOM? Tell us how you see it. Well, um, the, the answer is yes. Uh, but, but first, um, I wanted to just share a um, conversation that I had with the Crown Prince, which was uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, he, he was in New York. And he was talking about uh, uh, three new cities, actually, uh, in Saudi Arabia. And this is the first time I had met him. And he was so passionate and uh, so visionary, uh, so unique, that I had never met anybody in the world who had a vision of this type and who I could tell by force of personality um, was going to make it happen. And this is, this is very unusual. And I, I would say that from being a little older than I used to be and also going around the world, uh, that, that great leaders create great outcomes. Um, But by the same token, terrible leaders can take wonderful places and make them into a complete mess. Uh, and, and we get to see, those of us who, who go around the world, examples of both. Uh, and I'm really struck uh, by the transformational elements uh, that are occurring uh, in, in Saudi. Um, it's, it's really quite astonishing, which is why many of us are, are here today. Now, as, as to Naam, um, I was in Chicago, uh, Illinois, in the United States last weekend uh, because uh, one of my nieces was getting married. Uh, and they have a river that uh, flows through Chicago. Uh, and um, I had nothing to do in the afternoon, so I took the river tour. Uh, which is designed to show the architecture of Chicago. And towards the middle of the tour, uh, they were talking about the fire of 1872, which was probably the worst fire uh, in U.S. history. Uh, and it burned two-thirds two of the city and all the places that were important. And this was a huge tragedy. But as it worked out, it was the best thing that ever ha happened to Chicago because they got a chance to start a new city. And at that time, they had new technology, much like this time in history. But what they had was the invention of the elevator. Now, those of us here take elevators for granted, but at one point, there were no elevators. So, so what happened in Chicago is they ended up building the tallest buildings in the world um, because they had the technology to do it. They used their land more efficiently, and Chicago became 
the second largest city in the United States with great prosperity. Now in Saudi, you, you have the advantage you don't have to knock down, you know, an obsolete city. Those of us who live in the West, uh, call it the developed world more than just the West, we have incumbent cities uh, and they have enormous amounts uh, of, of issues uh, that face them. Uh, buildings that are not uh, at, at contemporary standard, uh, difficulty in, in adopting uh, uh, technology. Uh, those of you who travel uh, know sometimes it's almost impossible to get around uh, with uh, traffic, although you have your own share here in Riyadh, I must say. Uh, but all of those problems, as well as some other new problems, which are involved personal safety uh, and, sus and sustainability and scalability are very difficult to make work in incumbent cities. And this is the advantage of NEOM, that you can make it right like Chicago did. You can use the most modern technology. Uh, firms like ours who have big exposures in the uh, hotel business, uh, you're going to need hotels. Uh, you're you're going to be able to use entertainment centers, which is something that we do. Uh, there'll be light industry uh, that comes in. Uh, and I think the opportunity to create this new city uh, and attract people from around the world, first from around the region, then from around the world, is really an enormous opportunity. And I think that anyone who's in the presence of this kind of new vision has to really be in awe of what you're attempting to do with the assurances that it will work. So congratulations. Your Highness, this is a very important point. And here, you're beginning from scratch. You have foreigners, foreign businesses watching. What do you need most to make this a reality? Uh, uh, لا يمكن اليوم لأي مدينة في العالم أن تستعمل درونز داخل المدينة لأن لا توجد بنية تحتية من مواقف من مواقف من مواقف في العماير نفسها إلى آخره ففي أشياء كثيرة بتراعى في التخطيط الأول المدينة الأساسي بالنقل اليوم لا نعرف إذا سوف تكون مدينة توجد بها سيارات أو سيارات بدون قائد أو حتى لا توجد بها سيارات بتاتا تعتمد على تقنيات نقل أخرى هذا الشيء ينطبق على كل القطاعات فهناك فرصة جديدة للتخطيط من الصفر وبناء زون ومدينة جديدة بتخطيط من الصفر مثل ما ذكر ستيف لن يستطيع أحد أن يبني شيء مثل اليوم إلا في حالة واحدة أن يدمر مدينة قائمة ويعيد بناءها من جديد لكن لا يمكن لأي مدينة في العالم أن تتحول وتصبح مثل ما سوف تكون اليوم في المستقبل Masa, have you ever seen anything like this in all of your investing? Getting in truly at the very beginning? This, this is a fantastic opportunity. As uh, uh, Crown Prince says, because of the leadership, because of the location, because of the, uh, the people in, in the kingdom, we can make it happen. And uh, of course, it requires a lot of investment. But investment with a great return is a good investment. Investment with bad return is, of course, not. <laughs> but we are making investment in many, many opportunities. And I would not invest if I don't think there is a good return. And I am excited. I am excited because we can design the whole city from the from zero and with a futuristic you know, design, uh, we can make it happen so that every participant who participate on the project 
can make a great profit, not just a great profit, it is the beautiful life. The kingdom people, young generation, they can enjoy the future and the beautiful and with a, a great family relationship, with great business relationship with the rest of the world. I think this is a fantastic opportunity. So all of the city will have the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, so there will be no traffic jam, uh, and all the uh, security is uh, designed from the beginning. I think this will be a fantastic opportunity. So, Mark, let's get some specifics. From a practical standpoint, how do you see robotics working in NEOM? Um, before I get to that, I'd like to say, you know, I've been a technologist for a long time, and I love technology. And uh, there's a, a number of important ingredients. Uh, one is money. Uh, and I think we all know that. To really make progress in the technical area, you have to have money. But I don't think that's the most important ingredient. Uh, another ingredient is talent. Uh, we all know that talent's very important. Uh, but I don't think that's the most important ingredient either. I think big dreams is the most important uh, ingredient for making big progress. And I, I'm really glad to be on this panel with all these dreamers. Uh, His Majesty is obviously a world scale, uh, maybe, maybe a a universal scale, big dreamer, Masa-san, uh, of course, and uh, uh, it's really uh, a pleasure to be involved in a project like this. Um, beyond that, I'm excited by this opportunity, uh, which is really an opportunity for robotics, which is my specialty, uh, because it's a two-way thing. I think we can use robots to build the city, which will help a lot, and I think robots will populate the city and perform a wide variety of services, so it's a different kind of place to live, where robots are helping, of course, do uh, security, uh, but also things like logistics for moving things around, uh, maybe delivering things to your home uh, so that you don't have to have uh, uh, people doing that. Uh, I think that uh, uh, robots can also help when there's emergencies, uh, but I also think they'll help take care of people. Uh, you know, health care is a a big task, and I'd say around the world uh, the populations are aging, and uh, uh, right now it falls on uh, limited resources to take care of aged people, and there's no reason why robots can't help do that. I'm looking forward to the day when rather than uh, being a burden on my children to take care of me, uh, robots are helping take care of me. Um, and finally, uh, that's all in how robots are going to contribute, but I think that um, NEOM is going to contribute to robotics because it will provide resources for, and pull for development. Robots can't do all the things that we need them to do yet, and a project like this, uh, a world-scale project like this, will help pull the technology ahead. And finally, I think that uh, to help cultivate the tech base in NEOM, robotics is a focus will provide a, uh, an ecosystem, a tech ecosystem, or the heart of one that could really uh, have a big, big impact both on uh, the population of NEOM and on all of mankind through its contribution to robotics and other technology. Well, we saw the video and it's absolutely beautiful. I understand the opportunity for tourism and the hotel industry. What other industries, Your Highness, are going to see growth as a result of this? Um, دعمها وإنشائها داخل نيوم فهناك قطاعات تقليدية مثل الترفيه لكن نحاول نقدمها في نيوم بشكل مختلف أيضا نحاول نخلق اختلاف في هذا الجانب وهناك قطاعات غير تقليدية مثل البايوتيك والريبوتيك في نيوم فنستهدف تسع قطاعات مثل ما ذكرت بعضها تقليدي وبعضها قطاعات جديدة نريد أن يكون لدينا حصة لما سوف يكون شكلها في المستقبل 
تكون لليوم حصة جيدة في وضع هذه القطاعات في العالم في المستقبل. Klaus, would you like to add to that? Yes, I mean, uh, the, the, think of it, Maria, not just as an empty piece of land, but also think of it as an invitation to everybody who's in the tech industry. Massa said it already. I mean, there's a big announcement today. Neom is going to be the leader in solar. You know, so anybody around the world who is working in this, there's also still a lot going on technologically, will have a place, a natural place, a beautiful natural place where to come and where to cooperate with the best and brightest to make it happen, right? And think of it also uh, as from the regulatory point of view, because we also uh, have the liberty here to write a regulatory system for each industry that is most in tune with what they need. And uh, we had the discussion about drone-friendly cities, right? One issue is the regulatory side, which pretty much everybody who's got an established system struggles with. And you find that in almost each one of the new technologies, because when you go to personalized medicine, how do you do tests for personalized medicine? You know, and, and the existing structures struggle with it. They can't come to grips. This is one of the opportunities where we will assemble the leaders in the innovation and, and the, the ones that have thought about it most and say, what is the best regulatory system? that on the one hand, I mean, has high ethical standards and at the same time uh, accelerates the speed in which we can move forward. And I think this ingredient all um, make what you mentioned, which I think is essential here, it's talent. And this will become a magnet for talent, a magnet for people who really want to be part of bringing a vision to reality. So then, Your Highness, the regulation will be different. Uh, uh, the project. اليوم لا يوجد فيها سكان فسوف تصاغ الأنظمة بشيء يحفز القطاع الخاص ورجال الأعمال هذه أول مرة في العالم أنظمة زون تصاغ من قبل رجال الأعمال بالشكل الذي يجذبهم للاستثمار هم من سوف يصيغوا الأنظمة وغيرهم من شركائنا من سوف يصيغوا الأنظمة فهذه أول تجربة في العالم تخدم رجال الأعمال لصياغة الأنظمة والبيئة التشريعية التي يحتاجونها في منطقة معينة this is a huge point. It's an enormous point. Masa, a moment, a moment ago, you, you said there will be more robotics than people. Explain that. Where, where will we be seeing the most robotics? I would say in 30 years from today, the number of population in the world would be about 10 billion people. Number of robots. 30 years from today, I believe would be about 10 billion robots on the earth. The cars that is driving today become robots. It would, with the autonomous driving, with the intelligence, it would drive by itself. In my definition, it is a robot. The drone that flies, that is a robot. The, the drone that swims, there is also a robot, the giant robot, micro robot, all kinds of robots. They will have the intelligence. Did you, did you ever know, think about last 30 years, the power of computing, the speed of computing, the memory size, the speed of communication, that has improved one million times. If you think computer is smart today, 30 years from today, the computer will be one million times smarter than today. So if you think computer is already smart, it's going to become so much smart, and that super intelligence goes into the robot. They can serve many, many jobs or things that we are struggling today. So. If those robots come to help our life better, happier, if that scene is coming anyway, why don't our country here in Saudi, in the kingdom, in Neom, take the leadership? Take the leadership of the future. We can make it happen because this is a brand new city. And also one more thing. One more industry. I said sunshine. Did you ever think 
Only 3% of the land of kingdom, Saudi. Only 3% of land today can provide 50% of the electricity of the world. Did you ever think about that? That is the fact with today's technology of solar. And of course, we don't have to provide 50% of the electricity from Saudi to all over the world. We don't have to do that. But there is an advantage. I was amazed. Such a great sunshine and dry and the sun, that was in the past, that was the handicap, that was a difficulty. Now, suddenly it becomes an advantage. It is a beautiful advantage. And why don't we use that? With, I have met with the many people here in the kingdom. Very smart. Very smart. Now, with the strong leadership, with the great sunshine, with the great sun, with a great location, with a brand new city, we can make it happen. Steve Schwarzman. You have, you have taken over companies and had to change cultures and change the way they operate. What are the risks or the challenges that we all should be aware of as the kingdom embarks on this incredibly ambitious project that you see? Challenges and risks. Well, uh, I guess there's no risk of downside if Moss is involved. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he can get almost everyone in the world to come here and, and do things. Uh, so, so um, you know, having him on your team uh, is a great thing. Biggest risk of, of transformational projects is that they don't work. Uh, and then that sets off, you know, sort of... Uh, disappointment, um, you know, that goes broader than just uh, the projects. Uh, on the other hand, uh, success uh, has a transformational uh, impact where when people see that something can be done, they believe that other things will be done. Uh, and that's the great um, advantage uh, of, of this project. Uh, uh, and it's an advantage of this meeting. It's an advantage that the meeting is on television uh, and that everyone in the kingdom and outside the kingdom gets to hear what, what the objectives are. Uh, there are. There's almost no other place in the world where people are talking about things of this type. They're not talking about anything that's integrated by way of technology, There's, there are pieces of it. You see it on television, you see it on markets, you see it in magazines, uh, to the extent there are even magazines left uh, that haven't been disintermediated. Uh, and, and here it is. Uh, it's, it's on display, it's integrative, uh, and um, it's, it's something that not only a country can rally around, uh, but potentially, uh, when this starts working, and, and it's at scale, it, it's something that will have potentially a transformational uh, impact on other parts of the world and other countries. Uh, and it could be one of the most important uh, markers uh, in the 21st century. This is not an everyday kind of thing that we're all part of and that all of Saudi is part of. It's, it's remarkably exceptional. And those kind of dreams with excellent people involved, financial resources, uh, uh, Klaus, who you don't know yet, you'll get to know him, uh, he, he, he doesn't stop. He's, he's a very... Um, uh, on top of it, effective, aggressive uh, executive. I've, I've known Klaus for uh, 30 years, uh, and we've all evolved in 30 years, but he's never changed in that, you know, those <laughs> personal characteristics. And so they picked a very good person who has uh, knowledge and connections 
all, all over uh, the world, literally. Uh, you know, he can pick up the phone and get just about anybody uh, on it. Uh, so I look at the downside of this. Um, the only downside, realistically, is, is time. How fast do you realize your dream? And, and that's something that has to be, you know, sort of scoped out and, and planned uh, and make sure that expectations uh, are, are in line with what's achievable. But in investing, you, you only make a go decision in my world, everybody has a different concept of investing, I guess, is, is when you're like nine to one sure something's gonna work. Uh, you know, why, why take risk? I mean, I hate risk. Every entrepreneurial meet sounds like he's, he or she is doing something risky, but, but we all hate risk and, and do everything we can to get rid of it so nothing bad happens to us or our investors. So I think with the right time frame here, this is like really, really interesting and is gonna happen. The only way there's something that's another outcome is if you define something so narrowly what I also find is that not every dream I have, and most of them come true. And on this panel, and many people in this audience, particularly those of us who are guests, we're sitting here because we've dreamed something and we've made it come true. It's, it's much harder to dream wonderful dreams than it is to actually make them happen because you can make them happen a lot of different ways. There's just not one route to success for anybody's life or anybody's project. You have to be adaptive, and I think they will find a way to be adaptive here, uh, and the dream is really amazing. So, um, you know, to the crown prince who came up with this dream, um, I, I'm really dazzled uh, and in awe, and I think in that regard, you know, I just reflect the world. But you know, Go risk ahead. translates into opportunity, too. Uh, at least somewhere along the risk curve is uh, the place where uh, you really can have a big impact if you succeed, even though the chances of failure uh, might be higher. And uh, I, I don't think we all I mean, certainly the dreamers uh, uh, enjoy taking on uh, the challenges that, uh, that could fail and uh, where there's an opportunity for breakthrough. I think that the biggest uh, uh, risk is the um, coming up with the, eco the tech ecosystem that will attract people. Or I think that's the hardest part. I don't, I don't think it, the risk is so high, but I think it's the hardest part to go from, um, uh, from where we are today to a place where all the world's technologists are going to want to uh, come and work together. Uh, you know, I, I purposely wore my Silicon Valley shirt, which I always wear, uh, something like this. And uh, you know, life in Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley is one of those places where, uh, uh, you know, it, everything is bottom up from entrepreneurs who have their idea and uh, damn the, the torpedoes, they're gonna make their idea fly no matter what the odds. And uh, that's what we need to do in uh, Neom, have a culture like that. And, uh, you know, it can't be top down, it has to be uh, bottom up and uh, chaotic a little bit uh, in order to succeed. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, creating a little chaos uh, uh, to help further the dream. And you're able to do that because of the leadership, because His Highness is actually setting the tone uh, for this. Klaus, you wanted to add to that. Yeah, well, um, I think the, the, I agree with everything that has been said here, and I think the biggest risk in my view is we all are going through a period of time that in my view the change is so drastic that the word industry 4.0 doesn't really give it justice. I think it's so fundamental. I compare it with the transformation from when we were all farmers when, when the Industrial Revolution happened, you know? So I don't know what the label is for this, what we will see in future, but I think we have an opportunity here with Neom to create it. 
right? The, the risk there is because it is so foundational, it goes into all structures, not just technology, but also of human structures, that um, the human nature is very often that we look for a level of precision that is a 80, 90 percent precision, which we most likely will not have. So we will have to go into it with a, flex, with a clear guideline where we are going to go, probably with a 70 to 80 percent solution, but keep the flexibility of moving while we move. Because it's the question of time, and time, I think, time advantage, and time is a very, very, very important competitive advantage. Everything else we have, in my view, right? So it's, it's really on us. But I, I know that it takes enormous courage to say, I don't know exactly how this 30% is going to work out, but we're going to go with the 70%, and we're going to make mistakes. I mean, that's also very crystal clear. And by the way, it's 26,500 square kilometers. So when we say city, it's not giving it justice. It will be multiple cities, villages. I think of it, I'm not even using personally the word city because it comes with so many garbage. You know, I'd love it to be villages, communities, you know, where people interact with each other, you know. So that's, and, and make tons of money, you know, tons of money in a very, very good way, you know. And, and Your Highness, this is obviously, you are a visionary. And this is part of your vision and His Majesty's vision for Vision 2030. What is your expectation in terms of timing from dream to reality? Uh, سهل لكن تحقيقه صعب جدا في اليوم نريد ان نصنع شيء جديد فتخطيط شيء جديد ليس موجود اليوم في العالم فاحنا نجمع العديد من المبدعين والعديد من الشركات والمختصين في انحاء العالم لصنع هذا الشكل الجديد في نيويورك وفي نفس الوقت هذا الشيء يحتاج وقت والاستثمار لا ينتظر الوقت الطويل فهذا جزء من التحدي انه نحن تحت الضغط بأن ننجز شيء جديد في وقت قصير ونفس الوقت تحت الضغط بأن نقدم إبداع جديد لا نريد أن نرى أنفسنا بعد 15 سنة أننا فوتنا فرص كان ممكن نضعها في التخطيط المبدئي لليوم فهذا تحدي يقلقني لكن بلا شك بالعمل والمشاركة الكثير في أنحاء العالم وداخل السعودية سوف نجتاز هذا التحدي هذا في تصوري أكثر شيء يقلقني من ناحية نيو. And you have all faced risks in your own lives, in your own portfolios. Masa, you were telling me a story in the green room, how for one minute you were the richest man in the world, and then you weren't. Can you share that story? Well, in year 2000. Uh, for three days, I became richer than Bill Gates. <laughs> in, the, in the same year, my stock price went down 99%, and I almost broke. And uh, it was year 2000, internet bubble burst. So people said that the internet bubble, you know, it, people were expecting too much. And so more than the reality. And then when people get disappointed, actually it went down too much <laughs> below the reality. The reality was internet users kept on growing every year. There is no single year it went down. Internet technology power kept on growing. Only one, one way direction. So as the Crown Prince says, the people's expectation we have to manage. But when we have the right vision, when we have the right passion, when we have the right commitment, we can, we can go one way for the success for the future. Every day we improve. We, we use a, with a great vision that where the world is going. We have to think long term and then execute every day, step by step. So we have the strong vision and passion, and we have a patience, and we are the company which we have operated. So we know the difficulty, but we know how to survive. 
By the way, I survived from the almost broke, 99% down. Now I, I actually became the richest in Japan again. <laughs> So, so somehow I survived, and I think, I think uh, with the great partnership with the Southern Vision Fund, the Saudi, the kingdom, is the biggest partner, biggest investor. And our Vision Fund is already making a great progress, 22% uh, return in five months. So if you annualize, it's close to my past 18 years. Last 18 years, I have returned 44% every year, compound. 40%, 44%, 44% for 18 years. And I'm going to make it happen again. <laughs> and, and we know that Alibaba was a big part of that. Is there another Alibaba out there? Is it Neon? Neon will be a great success. I am, I am decided, committed. The, our a great leader, Crown Prince. You look at, look at the passion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have, I have met with many leaders of the countries of many, many people uh, last uh, thirty years, but. I haven't seen the leader with a great passion, a uh, 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 young age, great vision, and a little bit of money. <laughs> <laughs> that also helps. Yeah. That also helps. That helps. This is a fantastic combination. I, 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 I think we're going to succeed. I, go, I think we're going to succeed. One of the points that you made uh, earlier, yes, Your Highness. Go yes, ahead, please. Yes, please. I am one of 20 million people. I don't have anything to do with them. And I am less. I am less and less and less than them all. They are the ones who protect me and they are the ones who protect me. You mentioned earlier, 70% of the people here in the kingdom are below 30 years old. صحيح. Why is this so important? هذا سلاح ذو حدين. إذا عملوا وتوجهوا بالشكل الصحيح والطريق الصحيح وبكل قوة، سوف يخلقون بلد آخر مختلف تماماً وسوف يضعون بصمتهم في العالم. وإذا توجهوا التوجه الخاطئ، سوف يكونون دمار لهذا البلد. لكن اللي يطمئن بأن كل هؤلاء سبعين في المئة لديهم شغف وطموح كبير جدا على مستواهم الشخصي وعلى مستواهم الوطني ولديهم الحرص والدقة والاحترافية والذكاء العالي جدا لتحقيق المستحيل. Steve Schwarzman, talk to us about expectations. We have high expectations. We have high expectations for Niam. Are we expecting too much, too fast? Well, we're, we're at a meeting that's a little like a pep rally. So, so maybe a little bit uh, too fast. But I think as this uh, project rolls out, uh, you know, professionals like, like Klaus and his team uh, will, will have benchmarks that everyone agrees with, uh, and that's the way you, this will be run, and it will be paced uh, uh, correctly. Uh, and you, you can never succeed in a project for which you do not have passion and enormous enthusiasm. It's got to start with the leader, and it's got to go down uh, into the people who are going to be executing. And, and you know, that, that's what meetings like this and communication are for. Uh, and I think that's, that's very effective. Uh, and as long as, as, as there's a sense of order 
uh, e even though things may be 70% sometimes, like Klaus says, as long as there's a sense of order and communication uh, with constituencies. I think it's important uh, to have uh, the population in, in Saudi informed on a regular basis as to what's happened. It's almost like a shareholder's report, uh, and there'll be a lot of exciting things. There'll be a few disappointments, and in a way, uh, that will be instructive uh, for the country uh, to, to learn how to be uh, more innovative, uh, how to take on major new things. Uh, they'll see all the successes. They'll see an occasional failure. For those of us uh, who are in this type of world, we don't like the failures, you know, but, but that's what you end up learning from. You, you don't end up learning from your successes. I know that sounds, you know, sort of a little pat, uh, but, but we've all, you know, sort of profited. I'm sure Maso is uh, uh, unfortunately a wiser person, uh, having lost, was probably more than 99% of his wealth. It was probably 99.6% <laughs> of his wealth. Uh, and he comes back and he's not exactly the same, he's still optimistic, but, you know, you learn something when these, these things don't stay exactly on track. I could look at every person in the front row, uh, a lot of guests, it's happened to all of us. That's not a problem, it's, it's a learning experience. Now, one thing I'd leave you with, because I, I just happened to um, have, have introduced Maso uh, uh, during UN week at a big event, so I had to learn something about him. So I'm not a professional, cheerleader, but, but I am really appreciative. So I was sitting next to him and I said, Masa, I have to introduce you. So, you know, why don't you tell me about your best financial success? Because everyone in this room pretty much has their own best success, but it's always fun to learn about somebody else's. So um, he said it was my investment in Alibaba. Uh, and. Uh, you know, Alibaba's done very well in uh, China, and Jack Ma's like a fun guy, and you know, he was almost bankrupt three times. And um, so I said, well, how much did you invest? He, he said, uh, $100 million. No, no, $20 million. Oh, 20, oh yes, I'm sorry, that was Yahoo. It was $20 million. And I said, so what's that worth? He said, that's worth $130 billion. <laughs> Now, for those of you who aren't real good at math <laughs> or have trouble with English as your first language, 20 million with an M going to 130 billion is, I believe, the greatest investment success by someone who's not working at that business in world history. So, you know, when you dream sometimes, really good things happen. And, um, you know, you've got a team of people who are engaged with this project who aren't just dreamers. They're people who make things happen. And, and so the only risk is the timing. The rest of it will happen. I, I want to pick... I want to pick up on uh, a point Jack just made about, uh, about failure, or I don't use the word failure, but um, we have a, uh, a system of development at our company called build it, break it, fix it. And the idea is to uh, go so quickly that you're going to have things that don't work, but you learn so much, as you just said, from, uh, from what happens when they don't work. It's much more effective than carefully designing and, and planning all the way to the end because uh, that process gets you there. And I think that NEOM, if it's uh, you know, run by uh, people who are uh, you know, successful people, that'll, that'll be part of the process. We don't know yet how it's going to be in 2030, but uh, we'll put a machine in place that has the skills to uh, learn the problems and, uh, and solve them. And uh, I, I, you know, I don't fear that failure at all. 
Yeah, this we is have, very important. We have, a, and go we ahead, have Steve. a slightly different approach in a more conventional world. <laughs> you know, we try not to break them first. <laughs> we, we buy them and then we fix them and then we sell them. <laughs> So, so that may be more familiar to the people in the audience here, uh, but that works too. I want to ask you, um, His Highness earlier referred to biotech as one of the sectors, Mark, so I want to come back to that and find out where the robotics is being used in, in biotech. But first, Masa, this is such an incredible point that Steve brought up, $20 million turning into $150 billion in terms of your investment. Can that be done today, or have valuations gotten out of control? Well, it all depends on the opportunity and the company. If you blindly invest just because some other people also put the value, then it, it's a bubble. But if you invest into the company with the understanding of what's going to happen to that company, to that technology, 10 years later, 20 years later, it's not a bubble. So you have to really understand that technology, that business model, that leader in the company, and that management and the team of the company. Then you can avoid the bubble. What areas in the global economy do you see as value right now? I couldn't hear you. What areas of the global economy do you believe show value right now? Show the growth? I, I would say the growth is in the artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, the smart robotics, not the traditional robot, the smart robotics, and uh, the, uh, you know, the solar energy is also something as a, a great future because it, it, is, it has a, a beautiful technologies growth in the uh, cost and the efficiency and so on. And Your Highness, I almost feel like if you're not using artificial intelligence, you will get left behind. This is an area you want very strongly in NEOM. Uh, العالم لم ينتظر اي احد لكي يلحق به لا بد نكون جزء من صنع التطور الجديد في في العالم فمثل ما ذكرنا في البدايه المدينه سوف تقوم على احدث الاساليب اللي اليوم نحن العالم يعمل عليها الفرصه خياليه في نيوم منطقه شبه خاليه توجد احلام كثيره من القياده السعوديه من الكثير من السعوديين ومن كثير من شركائنا من شركات كبرى أو من مبدعين أفراد أهلاف الأحلام سوف تنشأ في نيوم وفي تخطيط نيوم الجميع لا يستطيع أن يتخيل كيف سوف يكون شكل مدينة شكل زون شكل البنية التحتية القطاعات إذا بدأت من الصفر وألغى فكرة المدن التقليدية والقطاعات التقليدية أشياء كثيرة ممكن أن تحدث you can understand, coming right to you in a moment, Steve, you can understand some people looking at your ambitious plans and saying, wait a minute, what is this all about? The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia investing in solar? Uh, like we know, the request on is not only from the energy. There are a lot of things that are used in the energy, from the petroleum and a lot of ونعتقد ان الطلب على الطاقه بتزايد بشكل كبير جدا في المستقبل فلا نعتقد انه سوف ينخفض الطلب على النفط بل سوف يتزايد الى ما بين عام 2030 2040 ولن ينهار بعدها بشكل مباشر فنستطيع ان ننظر لمصدر الطاقه التقليدي اللي قبل النفط الفحم لو نظرنا لمؤشر الطلب على الفحم الى الان مستمر في النقطه العليا التي وصل لها فاستعمال الطاقة الشمسية لا يعني أنه سوف يؤثر على النفط وسوف نقدم كثير من الأرقام في المستقبل في هذا الشأن. Yes, I understand, because as the global economy is moving forward and growing, it requires more energy. صحيح، وهناك طلب جديد على النفط من قطاعات جديدة، من صناعات مركبة ومعادن مركبة وبتركموات تخلق طلب جديد غير عن الطلب التقليدي من الطاقة. 
Steve. That's one, one advantage uh, for, for, for the kingdom of doing NEOM is, is that there are now no more conventional types of investments. Uh, technology is affecting almost everything we know. Uh, at Blackstone, we have probably 120 companies we own at any point in time. And we employ somewhere, depending on what we own, 500 to 600,000 people. We're usually the second or third biggest employer in the United States. We have a whole range of companies. And there are many people who are here with us uh, who have similar types of, of exposures. So this is a large company that we have. Nothing remains the same. And this is a warning to all of you who live your lives and think it's going to be the same the next day. It's changing so fast, whether it's the modes of distribution. You know, you can be in retailing and all of a sudden find your customers are leaving you and you have good merchandise um, because they can buy it online. They can buy your stuff online. The margin isn't big, as big. Uh, we're seeing changes in supply. Uh, it's happening everywhere. And we're sending our people, in effect, back to school so they can learn, not at the expense of making an investment and then it ends up going wrong because they didn't know what was going to happen to it. But even as more conventional investors, um, you have to learn. You have to know. Or else your children won't be able to inherit businesses that you have. They'll be damaged. And so starting a new city like this with the most modern technology will have benefits to everybody one way or another through the kingdom, either in growth rates or growing your own business or keeping GDP growing, providing for younger people. It will not happen if you don't engage and, and understand the different things that are going to be affecting your life. You can't see them. I'm starting to see them. Maso lives in that world. But it's a world that's coming right at all of us. And there are big benefits, and there are dangers for not knowing and adapting. Klaus. Yeah, well, I, I, I want to make uh, two, two, three points, really. The first is, uh, um, His Royal Highness already mentioned that in his uh, first uh, statement about NEOM. Um, I also want to make sure that people understand in the kingdom that the connection to the kingdom is a very important positive for us. I mean, we just talked about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence and automation are going into every field. There are, there are a lot of great companies here from the Saudi Aramco's, the Sabics, the Madens, and a lot of private companies here that are all having to change and undergoing this. And we will make Neom the place where we will tackle those issues first. So we're going to leverage this and, and make this the center of it, right? And there have been quite a number of conversations already undergoing. At the same time, also think about some of the things where regulation and existing infrastructure have held us back to do something where you would say that's odd. We will have a thing called digital air. You know, and what digital air is, is when you have children and you travel to a place where you have no internet. You know, this is the worst experience that you can have in your life, right? <laughs> You know, because they think that the internet is everywhere, you know. So we're going to create a world where you have internet everywhere for free. For free. Because it's an oddity of life, you know, it's as important as, as air is for the future, you know. So those, those concepts, you know, that sound revolutionary, but in reality it's are only revolutionary because they come from being stuck in the past. You know, the same thing, and Maria, you know, and you've, uh, you've, you've been in the middle of this, how the Western countries are struggling with reforming the healthcare system, right? And frankly, if there's one thing that we all hold very dear to us, it's our own health and the health of our loved ones. 
the very fact that the struggle has not led to, to truly putting healing in the middle, health and well-being in the middle, whereas in reality the systems around the world are all built to curing disease, right, or detecting disease, you know. We're going to build a system, we're going to work very hard and bring the most visionary minds and create a system which will put health and healing in the middle of it. So those are opportunities where I'm absolutely excited to take them on. And we all know it's not going to be easy, but those are the things where I think it's going to make it very, very livable for humans. Your Royal Highness, give us the final word. You have foreign investors watching and listening right now. What is your message to them as you embark on this new project? Uh, حريصين العمل معهم ونرحب بأي شريك جديد في هذا المشروع وأيضا نريد نضيف بأن لدينا اليوم في السعودية أربع مناطق مسجلة على خريطة العالم الرياض ومنطقة مكة والمدينة والمنطقة الشرقية اليوم أهني أهالي منطقة تبوك بأنها سوف تسجل في خريطة العالم بعد مشروع البحر الأحمر ومشروع اليوم وأعد جميع المناطق بأن سوف يحدث فيها نقلة نوعية مثل منطقة تبوك Your Royal Highness, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you so much. You can look at these ancient hills and see nothing. Or you can see nothing to hold you back. Neom. Over 25,000 square kilometers of endless potential that will change the way we live and work forever. A place where pioneers and thinkers and doers can exchange ideas and get things done. A startup the size of a country with energy that flows from the sun and wind Neighborhoods that can feed and clean themselves. Technologies that make life everything it can be. This is where we can prepare together for the next era of human progress. Some will look at these ancient hills and see nothing. But the rest of the world will know that this is where a new way of living began. Discover Neom.